Welcome, my inquisitive viewers. My name is Cameron Baker, and I am a Team Center Engineer at Ceratech. This video today, I'll be talking to you about how you might change that separator between the item ID and the revision letter. Um, right here, this little backslash, and you can even change the semicolon. If that bothers you and you prefer a different type of syntax or just nothing at all, I can tell you how to change that. Before I begin, I'd like to invite you all to leave a future topic suggestion in the comments so that our ever-growing digital library of tips and tricks will include some of the topics requested by you, the audience. Now, the process I'm about to go into is a little involved, uh, so much that it, I would suggest an administrator perform these on your system. Um, I won't cover every single uh, step that I go over, so if I go over something too fast, please leave a comment and we'll try our best to reply. All right, so in order to change the way this looks, what you need to do is I would first close Team Center and shut down any of the Team Center services you have. This change will have to be done on the server end of Team Center. Next, what we'll do is we'll open up our BMIDE, that is the Business Modeler um, Integrated Development Environment, and here we can change the data model. So, um, I have a specific business object in mind. That business object is just the generic item revision, the out of the box item. And what we do is I come over here and search for it. I'll come down, uh, excuse me, I'll click on the main tab. I'll come down to the business object constraints and come over to the display name. We'll click edit. And this is where those, you know, uh, special characters get set. You can see that the item ID is set separated by a forward slash, then the revision ID gets set, followed by a semicolon, sequence ID followed by a dash number, followed by the object's name. And you can add whatever uh, somebody you want. Let's say you want a dash, and then let's say you don't want anything between that and the sequence. You just completely take that out. Make sure that you leave at least one plus sign in each, in, uh, behind and in front of um, each field. You'll click finish. And after that, all you got to do is just save your data model and we can deploy. All right, I've deployed my BMID template successfully. Now I turn the surfaces back on and I open up my team center. And you'll notice the uh, example I was showing you has now changed. There is no backslash here, it's a dash, and there's no semicolon between revision A and the sequence number one. Uh, so there's no semicolon anymore. Um, so that's about it. That's it. I, it was simple, but a lot of people prefer uh, this you know, line to be written a certain way. Another thing that you can do, besides just changing the um, special characters, is uh, you can change the order in which they show up. You can change the item ID to go to the, at the end if you want the object name to be in front. Best practice, don't remove anything from this. It's always good to have as much information as you can in one line. Uh, those four pieces of information, the item ID, revision, sequence, and the name, is usually enough. You don't want to crowd it too much, but um, that's about it. That's all you have to do for um, the... Um, configuration. All right, just to compare, so before we had what the item revision looked like here, and then afterward, it looks like this. Now, you'll notice the revisions change a little bit. I'll talk about that in another video, but right now, this is just for item revision, changing the item revision. So, with that in mind, I'd like you, if you'd like to see more tutorials, check out our other videos at Ceratex. YouTube channel. We also offer what's called CES Customer Enablement Series, and it's held on the first and third Thursday of every month. Here you'll be able to see more complex tutorials, and you can ask questions in real time, so that way you get a response and have a conversation with another engineer. Um, to get more information about the topics or about how the CES sessions work, just email to info at saratech.com. Thank you so much. Thanks for checking out our channel. If you like what you saw, make sure to like and subscribe down below so you don't miss out on any new videos.
Follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter for the latest engineering news and information. And to see all of our upcoming events, please visit our website at saratech.com events.